I'm Kerr Williams and I bought these comics today. Well, I still haven't committed to any one comic store. I don't have a pull list anywhere, so I'm kind of just grabbing whatever is available. I went to two comic stores today, the second of which was Dr. Nose, which was recommended to me by Andrew. Thank you very much. That is, in fact, a good shop. I still don't know where I'm going to end up living next month, so there's no point in putting down roots at any one comic store yet. But here's the cool stuff that came out this week. The issue I'm most excited about easily is issue five of Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees by Patrick Horvath. This series is so good. It's like a binge-worthy TV show in a comic book. It's about fluffy animals and serial killers and every single issue has just a breathtaking cliffhanger. I'm super invested. I barely ever feel as eager for the next issue as when I finish each issue of this series. Next up is issue one of Uncanny Valley by Tony Fleeks and David Wachter. Wachter? Watched her? I don't, know. I don't know yet if I'm a big fan of Tony Fleeks, but I liked the way this cover looked. I know it's a variant cover, but it showed a lot better the contrast between the two art styles that I can expect from the series. The main art style is pretty good. It's a very clear aesthetic. You can tell what's going on. It has a mood to it. And then we have the juxtaposition of this cartoon character running in, which feels very Space Jam, but it seems like there's almost an element of horror in the story. So that's pretty exciting. Next up, I've got issue 11 of The Incredible Hulk. That's by Philip Kennedy Johnson, and we've got Danny Earls doing guest art like he did on the last couple issues. So he's filling in for this little short story that takes place in between a bunch of other stories. I'm fully caught up in The Incredible Hulk now, and I gotta say that it's growing on me as it goes. It's easily one of the best series at Marvel. So if you like the Hulk or you like Marvel Comics and you don't know where to start, the Incredible Hulk is one of their best series right now. Then I've got issue 19 of Fantastic Four that's by Ryan North and Carlos Gomez, and I will admit it, this series is also growing on me quite a bit. Now that I'm fully caught up and I've gotten used to the vibe of the series, I gotta admit that this is some pretty good stuff. There's lots of family, but there's also lots of pretty credible science. And it looks like this 1930s era private eye vibe that they're going for for this issue is pretty well done, so I guess I finally have high expectations for a Fantastic Four comic. Next up, I got issue two of Napalm Lullaby by Rick Remender and Bengal. To be honest, I don't remember really what happened in issue one, but I do remember that it's pretty high quality stuff. It's Rick Remender, so who's surprised? This issue I've already read, and it's got grade A dialogue, really great material. More importantly, it's got a treasure room full of cultural references and oddities. Ooh, I like that a lot. And I think that little toy right there might be a reference to Wes Craig's Kaya. I wouldn't be surprised because Rick Remender and Wes Craig worked together for so long on Deadly Class, but I don't know for sure. I might be wrong. This series has a ton of great stuff in it. Great dialogue, great world building, really interesting things happening, and it's only on issue two, so I fully recommend picking it up for yourself. Then I've got issue seven of The Transformers. That's by Daniel Warren Johnson and Jorge Corona. I am not really surprised to see the art duties being done by Corona now instead of Johnson himself. He's an A-list talent, and he's probably super busy, so it makes sense that they would only get six issues of him writing and drawing it. Corona's art is very similar. It's not quite the same as Johnson since it doesn't quite have the same energy to it, but it is very similar. Next, I got issue 10 of Phantom Road by Jeff Lemire and Gabriel H. Walta. This series is pretty good. It's kind of a slow burn, like not a ton happens in each issue, and it's not quite as addicting as Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees is, but it's still pretty good, and it feels kind of like a TV show. If you're into supernatural stuff or just the desert and trucking, then this is your kind of book. Then I got issue two of Ultimate X-Men by Peach Momoko. Issue one was pretty good. I had a review video for that. I'm not sure exactly how much the Ultimate X-Men will tie into the rest of the Ultimate Universe, but for a standalone X-Men story, it's pretty good so far. Then I've got issue three of The Cabinet by David Ebeltoff, Jordan Hart, and Chiara Raimondi. This series is pretty good. Like I think I said in a previous video, the authors want the comic to seem like a buffet of comic ideas. And it is very dense and creative and colorful. There's a whole lot going on here. There's something for everybody. Sometimes I'm a little confused. I remember not really knowing what was going on in issue two. I couldn't remember issue one all that well, but it's still a pretty well done series. Moving into the X-Men stuff, we got issue 47 of Wolverine. That's by Victor Laval, Benjamin Percy, and Jeff Shaw. Yeah, I don't know. These issues come out every other week, so I'm going to say the same thing now that I've said a billion times before. It's better Wolverine than Wolverine has been. It's some of the best X-Men comics. It's good Sabretooth, but I would 
couldn't exactly say that it's blowing my mind. Well, then we got issue two of Miss Marvel Mutant Menace, a series that I am really just not sold by. Honestly, I'm only still buying it out of my sense of completion for everything Krippoan era, and it's got mojo on it, which means that there's a pretty good chance my favorite comic character of all time, Longshot, might show up. This is by Iman Vellani, Sabir Perzada, and Scott Godlewski, so pretty similar team to what's been doing Miss Marvel for a while. If you've been enjoying it, you'll probably continue to enjoy it. If you're like me and you weren't really enjoying it, I don't know, you might not enjoy it. Issue 17 of The Invincible Iron Man, I, I don't care. Issue 4 of Resurrection of Magneto by Al Ewing and Luciana Vecchio. I'm very confused. I don't really know what's happening in this series. I have a really hard time staying engaged. Al Ewing is a great writer, but I just, I just cannot connect to this series. And lastly, book 2 of Batman First Night. I have not had the chance to read issue 1, and now that I moved, I have no idea where issue 1 is. So I can't read issue 2 yet, so I don't know how good it is. But it's Batman in the 30s by Dan Jurgens, so it's probably pretty good. And that's it for today. I am really, really eager to get into a semi-permanent house other than this Airbnb so that I can have my actual bookshelves up to look at instead of these tetras here. And also, I kind of need more shirts to wear. If you can't tell, I'm wearing a comic store shirt right now. That's Newberry Comics in Boston. I was there last weekend. Great stores. If you've got any comic store shirts that you'd like to send to me, I certainly would not be opposed to the idea. Just leave a comment. We'll work something out. And if you've read the issues that came out today, what'd you think?